Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host here for episode 54 of the show. Got a few stories that we'll talk about today, mainly about some car manufacturers. But first, before I start that, let me uh, start with an article about charging. And this came out uh, just recently about London in the UK, that they are planning more than 50,000 Yes, you heard that correct. 50,000 EV charging points by 2025, which is only about five and a half years away. Uh, the mayor of London, uh, who is a Sadiq Khan, um, he's behind the Electric Vehicle Incentive Task Force, and he's put some serious plans together to get London with the program as far as zero emissions. And he wants to do that as fast as possible. So the government aims to provide Londoners with at least 50,000 electrical uh, electric vehicle charging points by 2025. Um, I guess the driving force there is that the air quality is now the worst in the city's history. Um, and that's really spurring uh, the, the government's um, movement for cleaning up the air. And part of that is electrification. So as early as next year, the city of London aims to install three to 400 fast charging points. And uh, by 2025, the number of rapid chargers is aimed to increase between 2300 and 4100. And then another mix of slow uh, fast EV charging points, slow to fast, excuse me, EV charging points are aimed to grow from around 3,400 to uh, 4,700 in 2020 and then 33,000 and change to almost 48,000 by the year 2025. So obviously the majority will be most likely level one, level two chargers because obviously they're a lot more, a lot uh, less costly and more, um, more uh, financially uh, acceptable, like easier to, to put in than DC fast charges. They're pretty expensive, but it's good to see that they're doing a mix of both. So uh, stay tuned. And, you know, for, I got a lot of viewers that are out in the UK. And if you see a lot of this construction going on, or you're seeing a lot of these charge points go up, uh, send me an email or drop a comment. Now, if you're following me on Twitter, and I really wish you do, uh, you would, because I've got uh, less Twitter followers than I do uh, subscribers, so that's fine. Uh, but follow me on Twitter, and uh, at EV Rev Show is a Twitter handle, and I've been tweeting about pickup truck wars. The EV pickup truck wars are heating up again. It started off with this video that came out from Rivian, and you know, I love watching Rivian. Their, their marketing is very slick. I'll have to give them credit for that. And it's simply what they call a uh, tank steer. And you're seeing this video run as I'm talking or the term tank turn. They've actually uh, coined these phrases or trademarked the terms even uh, for their own uh, advertising use. Um, it doesn't look like there's some discussion in this article that if this was CGI or not, but it doesn't look like it because it was produced by Rivian's ad agency. So I'm assuming because of the, the torque and the electronics involved in EVs that you could uh, have a mode where you could turn turn this vehicle like it does in a tank and you see this video running here so pretty cool stuff it's just nice to see Rivian that's continuing to be out there to uh, uh, let people know that hey they're around uh, and you know they're doing things and here's another little nugget that they'll drop on you now uh, I mentioned pickup truck wars because not soon after that Ford came out with their 150 uh, prototype which was shown towing a freight train a really cool video that that Ford put together. It's all marketing spin. I remember Tesla w with, uh, I think, the Model X towing a plane a few years ago. So it's all it's all f uh, fun marketing, um, but it just it gets eyeballs looking at this stuff, and that's what we want, right? In the EV revolution. So they put together this nice video of one of their test mules towing more than a million pounds. Um, the prototype electric F-150 pickup truck pulled 10 double-decker rail cars, weighing that amount to a distance of about a thousand feet, and then. They didn't stop there. They loaded those rail cars with 42 of their gas-powered F-150 pickup trucks, uh, 42 being each year that the F-150 has been America's best-selling truck. That's amazing. I didn't know that. 42 years. Wow. That's, uh, that's awesome for Ford. But we do have to shift it to electrification now. And it did it again. So it loaded it up and it pulled that and whatever that extra, you know, uh, tens of thousands of pounds was or hundreds of thousands of pounds, they pulled that. So um, it's pretty cool. It's a marketing stunt, I know. and But it's just fun to see this stuff come out. And, you know, Ford is continuing to, to, put, uh, to put nuggets of information out there and that they claim that their development continues at a good pace on the new 
of the new upcoming F-150 all-electric pickup truck, uh, but it hasn't physically presented anything until now, so that's good to see. This truck is expected to debut in 2022. I don't know if it's going to look like these pictures that I've been showing. We'll have to wait and see, but that's what the prototype is. Now remember, I mentioned Rivian just a few minutes ago. Ford actually ended up buying into Rivian. They uh, gave a $500 million investment to uh, that company uh, because originally it was GM that was kicking that idea around. And then they walked and Ford came in and said, no, we'll do it. But that's part of a separate investment program that Ford will be able to use Rivian's technology rather than its hardware. Now, uh, Ford is also working on its own electric, full electric SUV. Uh, tentatively called the Mach-E, and it also plans to roll out a hybrid F-150 in 2021. So we'll wait and see what happens, but it looks like things are happening uh, with Ford and they're accelerate, starting to accelerate their plans. I really hope they do because they are behind the eight ball there. But uh, hey, you know, just nice to see more, uh, more media attention given to electric vehicles. And lastly, on the pickup wars, and that's, let's not leave out GM. GM is saying they've acknowledged and they continue to acknowledge that they are working on a fully electric pickup truck as well. They will not be left out. The fact they've claimed that their truck will be very average when it comes to pricing. Don't know what that means. Hopefully it'll be a little bit lower than... Uh, uh, it'll be at, co at least cost parity. Now, it's anticipated that the uh, GM pickup truck will ride on their third generation global EV platform called BEV3, if I have that correct, uh, which is are the under underpinnings of some of the other electric vehicles like the Cadillac division and so forth. There's no other details from that, but uh, again, it's just nice to see that, you know, GM doesn't want to be left behind, so they're making sure that their voice is heard by saying, hey, we're doing something here too. Now, staying with GM, and I mentioned Cadillac. Well, Cadillac has announced that they're going to come out with a fifth generation Escalade, which will offer a fully electric model. A nice to see. Um, now Escalade is their, their big boy when it comes to SUVs and looks like um, maybe in 2021 to 2022. And that would make sense uh, given the time frames. But we'll have to wait and see. Now, there's no really big specs on this other than the fact that um, that GM says that they claim that this is going to have upwards of 400 and 400 miles or 644 kilometers of range. Uh, and the, because this is a North American article, I'm going to guess that it's going to be an EPA number that they're quoting. Uh, so that's outstanding if they do that. So, and that also suggests that this thing will have a whopping size battery pack. Now, remember, Rivian pickup trucks and SUVs are coming with large battery packs. And of course, um, the Tesla Model X has a big battery pack. And the S uh, is the long range S is, gets about 600 kilometers now. So it's not uh, it's, it, I certainly don't see that this can't happen, especially the way battery technology and cells are being developed and continue to advance in density and, and less weight and all that good stuff. So uh, keep your eyes on that. If anybody gets more wind of uh, something more tangible from GM on the Escalade, please let me know. Uh, but uh, hope to be starting to see more activity around this within the next year. Now, VW Group and their subsidiaries continue to uh, come out with battery electric vehicle announcements, and Sayat has done that as well. Their first um, uh, MII electric should be hitting dealerships in Europe at the very end of 2019. Um, this is their first um, introduction to the all-electric series produced, uh, and it's going to be built in Bratislava, Slovakia. Beautiful city. We, my family and I were there a few years ago visiting. A lovely place. They'll start that production in the fourth quarter of 2019 of this year. And pre-sales will be launched in September for the vehicle. Now, initially the car will be available in Europe. In these countries, Germany, Netherlands, Norway, France, Spain, Austria, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Italy, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, and Sweden. Uh, so at least that's where it's going to be coming out. So it's a pretty good mix. Um, it'll be exclusively, um, uh, the electric version will be exclusively produced um, as a part of the conventional because they're replacing the conventional say at MII uh, uh, this month, basically. So uh, the conventional ICE version will cease production uh, later on this month or within the next couple of weeks. And then they'll come out with the electric to replace it in the fall and the end of the year. So great to see. The only specs I could get on this is that it'll have a 36.8 kilowatt hour battery pack with a 61 kilowatt electric motor uh, and so forth and so forth up to 260 kilometers or 162 miles of WLTP range. So let's EPA that to around 225-ish or so with a 61 kilowatt uh, uh, and producing 212 newton meters uh, for the electric motor 
uh, 40 kilowatt DC uh, combo 2, a CCS combo 2 for fast charging, but 40 kilowatt limited speeds, which should be fine for that size of a battery. Uh, and it'll have an onboard 7.2 kilowatt charger for uh, home charging level 1 to level 2 to give you a 0 to 80 in about 4 hours for overnight. Um, so, hey, just again, great to see more stuff coming out. And we are seeing a lot of electrification in Europe. That seems to be the hotbed. So uh, good. And if anybody has one of these on pre-orders, uh, let me know. Let me know what they're telling you and what kind of time frames they're, they're giving you, if anything, right now for deliveries. I don't have pricing, so I'd love to hear from anybody who's put one on order and if they've if they've indicated any kind of a price point. And finally, on the automaker's uh, front, uh, Lucid. Now, I've, been, I've been loosely following Lucid uh, because they've had their ups and downs. They've had challenges where they've had to go and fundraise. And I did report, I believe, late last year or early this year that they were successful in fundraising over a billion dollars in financing from a, from a Saudi Arabia company or organization, something like that. Um, so they are in the news because they have broken ground on their factory where they're going to build these Lucid Air electric cars. It's going to be in Arizona. So they broke ground uh, earlier uh, this month in Casa Grande, Arizona, and uh, that the plant is on track once it's built to start production of the Lucid Air by late next year, late 2020, according to them. Um, now, originally Lucid, again, as I mentioned, wanted to start building in 2018, but because of finance and building permits and it's it's always funding at the end of the day they say building permits but it's always funding uh, you could be sure of that but Ukraine when they got that one billion bucks that kick-started them back and they were able to push this thing forward so anybody has any updates for me please let me know in the comments or send me an email and uh, we'll continue looking at the lucid air am I just not sure of the viability of this company uh, as far as uh, you know how long they can go um, before, you know, they really have to start selling cars, getting stuff out there. We'll see. They've got some money, at least keep them going for a while. And my last little tidbit of news is a couple things on the Nissan Leaf front. First of all, there was, I tweeted earlier this week about some, uh, uh, it's a voluntary uh, service um, uh, campaign that Nissan is doing in North America. Uh, in fact, I believe it might be uh, North American Europe. I have to go check those facts again. But it's to do with the grounding plates in the bolts that hold some of the battery pack mechanisms together, I believe from an exterior uh, uh, casing uh, perspective. And it's uh, because of countries that we use road salt, like here in Canada and most of, most of the Canadian, uh, pretty well all across Canada, with maybe the exception of BC that we use a lot of road salt. Uh, but certainly parts of BC would, and uh, that can add to uh, corrosion of some of the materials holding these plates uh, into the pack, and they could corrode a little sooner than anticipated, or uh, I'm not 100% sure on all the details, it's very limited in details, but they call it their grounding plates and the bolts that attach those. So uh, if you uh, get a letter from Nissan, you will receive one, they will ask you to voluntarily bring these cars in, book an appointment, it takes a couple hours to do at no charge, of course, to fix it. And this goes back across both all generations of the Nissan Leaf, both Gen 1, Gen 2, back from 2011 to 2018 models. So you'll have to see if you get a letter. It doesn't seem to impact every one that's been produced. It's only certain areas. Maybe it was cer oh, certain uh, parts that came in from a certain batch of suppliers over time that maybe the bolts might be fatigued or something like that. So I'll have to watch that. Also, uh, it looks like finally Nissan is going to be able to give the... Um, a BMS update, the battery management system update that the folks in the UK and uh, I believe Asia got, but certainly in Europe, they got uh, months ago. And it's able to just condition the throttling a little bit better on the Nissan Leaf, on the 2018 and 2019 Nissan Leafs, um, just so that it doesn't throttle as harshly as it was doing before to uh, just allow a little bit quicker uh, char uh, fast charging speeds uh, over the over that time when you're multiple charging. The reports that I've been receiving for some of my friends like James, uh, Green Tea Leaf, and, and some others, uh, Aaron out there, uh, they say it does make a difference, that BMS update. It's, it saved them a lot of time, and it does make the uh, multiple charging experience, fast charging experience, quicker as far as uh, time goes, waiting. So it looks like we're going to be getting that in North America. There was a uh, lady from uh, uh, one of the um, authors in the Clean Technica site, Jennifer, who... Uh, Sensiba, who started a petition, which I signed. I think she got about six or seven hundred people on that, asking for Nissan to uh, let it let it loose in North America. Um, I've been pressuring uh, Nissan corporately, both here in Canada and the U.S. as well, uh, and having conversations with them to have it released. So it looks like our combined efforts have done the job, and uh, Nissan is releasing this. I'm uh, I'll be getting it. 
uh, probably within the next month because I'm booking this uh, voluntary recall or voluntary service, excuse me, it's not a recall for those grounded plates and I'll be going in and getting my BMS update done at the same time. So uh, if anybody's interested, the BMS update is uh, you've got to actually phone Nissan and say you want it. And uh, there's, a, um, uh, there's a TSB out on that. So if you uh, look at... Um, uh, look at the information that I'm putting up here, and you can also quote uh, NTB19-056, excuse me, when you phone your dealer, and uh, they can look it up and uh, say, yep, yeah, we got that, and book an appointment, and it should be about an hour or less just, just to do that. It shouldn't be too take too long to get that update done. Now, I'm not sure if there's any waivers or anything that Nissan's going to want us to sign. Uh, I haven't got to that step yet. I certainly won't if it comes to that. I prefer to have... A fully functional warranty versus giving up some of that warranty for a little bit more convenience in rapid charging. I don't really rapid charge very often, especially multiple times. I may may go somewhere and have to recharge rapid charge once to get to my destination. To do more than that in a given day is very rare for me. It might be only once or twice a year. So I'm not I'm personally not willing to give up any warranty if if I'm asked to or amend the warranty in any way uh, for this BMS update. But I will let you know if that does happen and I'll uh, bring it up on a show, but uh, I won't know until I get there. But uh, that's my plans anyway. So uh, anybody is interested in getting this done, reach out to your local Nissan dealer and uh, ask those questions. Okay, well, and that's it for episode 54 of the EV Revolution Show. Already here, educating minds one tailpipe at a time. Just a few stories I wanted to cover for today. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'm extremely, uh, uh, really pleasantly pleased about the responses I get on YouTube and the comments that come on after shows. A lot of good dialogue there. So please keep it coming. Keep things interesting and civil, of course. And like and subscribe if you haven't. Would appreciate it. And if you don't like it, you can do that too. Put the thumbs down. Uh, doesn't really, uh, I try to do my best folks, so I appreciate uh, all, all feedback. Um, of course, big heartfelt thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you're not sure what Patreon is, you can check it out um, at uh, the, my, the link here that's in the, the closing uh, uh, contact information coming up at the end of the show. And you can support me if you want. Even a dollar a month would go a long way. It's totally up to you. I do appreciate everybody who does support me. And the thank yous for them are coming up at the end here in the roll credits. And, uh, of course, um, uh, also want to just thank everybody for watching, for taking the time out of your busy days to spend a few minutes with me on the show and a little, a little bit more about what's going on in the EV landscape around most parts of the world. So until the very next show, please, everybody uh, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.